Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Great Day Houston. At just a year and a half old, our first guest had already experienced some monumental challenges. His life since then reminds us of monumental lessons as well, from unconditional love to the power of laughter. A childhood friend convinced Tommy Davison to perform stand-up comedy, and soon after, he went from a stage in D.C. to Hollywood and a groundbreaking sketch comedy show in Live in Color. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. It's not Sade, all right? It's Sadie. <laughs> right? I don't know nothing, Starsky, but the word on the street says that Beretta's got a bird. And then I got a nose job and changed my chin and made my skin light. Stop. Hammer time. Every time you see me, the hammer's on a roll. The line producer's in my ear, and he can't even give me cues because he's laughing. Before In Living Color, Tommy's life included living in black and white. He joins us this morning ahead of his appearance at the Houston Improv all this weekend. Good morning, and welcome back to Great Day, Tommy. Yes, yes. Not to, not to disturb any camera angles. Yeah, yes, yes. The director's like, sit down. Wow, I was, I was liking watching that stuff. I was like, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to just watch those sketches. What's it like watching it? Because when you're in it and doing mm -hmm, something, mm -hmm. you're obviously not looking at yourself. Right, right. And, and it, you're so good at it. What's Thank it like you. watching that? Thank you. Um, it's like being there. Yeah. You know, I, I, that's what we miss on TV. Am I right? You that's, are right about that. Do we miss yeah, that? You're right about that. Like, yeah. just really getting down to being funny, really getting down to being entertaining, really being happy. Yeah. Just, you know. And we need that, I think, more today than ever before. This mm -hmm. is the part when I know I've turned the corner and I'm sounding like my parents. We need that more today we need that than more ever today, before. Yeah. Okay, I want to back up a little bit. A lot okay. of people know some of your story. We've shared it before. Mm -hmm. But I think telling that story again is mm -hmm. so important today. Mm -hmm. I mentioned a rough start. Tell people what I mean by a rough start. You ain't lying. A uh, rough start is, is um, uh, being left in the trash can as an infant and, and, and being near death and being found randomly um, by a white woman, yeah. but back then I didn't know what black and white were. Yeah, you know, yeah. What I mean? you just needed nurturing and yeah, love. Yeah. How did you, you find know? out about this story about being like? Because you were you were too uh -huh. young to really mm -hmm. know, but you were old enough probably right. to experience some anxiety and stress when you were left. And you're 18 months old. Well, you know what? You, you know, I didn't know anything. Yeah. All I knew is that uh, at around about as far as, far as I can remember, yeah. I'm this happy child. I grew up I grew up in um, in um, Wyoming and Colorado. I'm this happy child, you know, I grew up on farms and, you know, just free, you know, yeah. and, and we moved to Washington, D.C. And I found out that my family was a different color than mine because because the kids beat our ass every day. Mm. And I was such a happy kid. And they were saying uh, uh, to my family, uh, uh, kill the white crackers and, and, and kill the white cracker lover. And let's lover. give people an idea of what time yeah. this is. Okay, the okay. Civil Rights Act of 1964 uh, and 65 had uh, just been passed. Uh, uh, it forbade discrimination, like you had to tell people, you can't discriminate against mm -hmm. people because of their sex, their race. Uh, it, it enforced desegregation of schools was uh, happening uh, at that uh, time. Uh, uh, the bills also enforced voting rights that said, yes, uh -huh. you can vote without mm -hmm. harassment. On um, So you have this white adoptive family. And mm -hmm. your parents, in a way, felt mm -hmm. like when, when President Kennedy said, mm -hmm. ask not mm -hmm. what your country can do for you, but you can do for your country that they were taking part in that in, in kind of closing that gap on race relations. You read my book. I read your all right. life, yes. Um, <laughs> well, all I know is that I was five years old, you know, yeah. and I went to my mom and said, why are they, you know, why are they ask, telling me white cracker lover when I like graham crackers? Yeah, right. <laughs> With the sentiment yeah, on it. Yeah, okay. I like graham crackers, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, white, white crackers can be a little dry, Yeah. you know. So, so you know, you like, oh, you can't swallow them. Yeah, yeah, you want the cinnamon you know, graham you know, crackers. You, you know what I mean? So, so I went back to her and said, you know, why are they doing that? And they said, she said, that's what people your color call people our color when they don't like them. Yeah. And I was like, really? Like that's crazy. You know, well, what color am I? You know? And she said, you're black. And I said, no, I'm brown, like yeah. the crayons. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Because, you know, and and so she said, uh, uh, well, that's how it is. And I was like, that is the stupidest thing I ever heard, yeah. you know? But it got it's so- It's interesting how it doesn't make sense to young kids, but we try to make it make sense to right. them later, right? They're mad at a color that really isn't the real color. <laughs> so, yeah. so we moved to the suburbs then, I'm five years old, and that's the first time I heard the N-word, mm -hmm. because grown men were chasing me home. Like I barely would get in the house, kill the Nick, kill them, kill them. Kill yeah. And I went to my mom and I said, who are these Nicks? We need to stay away from them, because they don't seem like very good people. Yeah. And she said, well, that's what people our color call people, your color, when they don't like them. Mm. And I was like, well, what color are y'all? And she said, we're white. And I said, no, you're beige. Yeah. Or, or you're peach, like yeah. the crayons. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> and so I'm like, this is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard in my life. You yeah. know, and it made me really sad. I started crying because I, I love them. Yeah. And how can I how can I love someone and 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 hate them at the same time? Yeah. Because when I was growing up, you love them through experience, and society is telling you you shouldn't. No, but I'm not even in society yet. I'm yeah. five. Yeah. Yeah. So so so, you know, I thought we were like animals. Like, because I, I grew up in a lot of, a lot of, um, and watched a lot of litters, because yeah. I grew up on farms. So if a dog, a black dog could have three white puppies, a gray one, a brown one, like at the same time, yeah. and loved them all, and they all were having fun in the box, and, and we had fun with all of them. Yeah. Or a horse. Yeah. A horse could be, uh, let's say the horse is like a white horse, he could have a pure white coat, I mean black coat, yeah. you know? And so I thought we were like that. And it, it just amazed me how we couldn't love each other like 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 that, yeah. you know. Is but I found out when I was black. I, <laughs> I, 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 I moved to a neighborhood that was a, an integrated neighborhood, and the, and the big white teenagers and adults would run and kill the knit, right? So these black teenagers just stood in front of me one time, you know, and, and they ran the other way. And I've been black since that day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't gotta find out about this black yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna right. find some more out about this. You know what I mean? You know, what I, mean? I gotta get on but that I one. I think you know we always look back at look back at what our, our early experiences do uh -huh, and how it sets uh -huh. the foundation for mm -hmm. what we do mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. You've never been afraid to step out and mm -hmm. try things, and you do so mm -hmm. many things. Mm -hmm. uh, you have music right now. I do. And speaking of which, uh, I have a single coming out. My next single coming out is called Kid Zero. Yeah. And who uh, are you um, singing um, like? Because you can sing like everybody else. Michael Jackson, right, you can sing right. like Sammy Davis. Right. We're going to hear Tommy? Uh, you're going to hear Tommy, but you're going to hear another phase of me. Um, this is smooth jazz. Mm -hmm. so And Ooh. I got some really cool people on, on it. I've worked with Dave Koz and just everybody. Welcome to the quiet storm yeah, with exactly. Tommy Davis. You know, so you'll hear the, the, the part. There's so many parts of me. Like I can do anything. Like I can do, yeah, 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 yeah loud now. Or I, or I, or I can go. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, there is a time when I, you know, but thank you, thank you. Uh, but in this phase, it's going to be scatting jazz. You know, so you're going to hear that side. But the cool thing about this song, it's called Kid Zero, mm -hmm. and on the cover is John Brown. Uh, John Brown, the abolitionist, who really started the Civil War. Yeah. You know, he took him and his family and, and, and some slaves and went down to Harper's Ferry and decided he's going to end slavery himself because he believed that everybody should really live together, had a, had a staunch belief in God, and it started the Civil War uh, uh, 18 months after. Now, the ir irony is my mother found me in the trash when I was 18 months. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there was a connection there. So I called it Kid Zero uh, because we're all Kid Zero. Yeah. We're all me, yeah. you know, at the same time. And so I put that song out now because there seems to be some kind of race problem in this country, <laughs> and I don't see it. Because <laughs> yeah. everybody in here looks different well, to me. Well, it's funny. We say Houston you know what is I mean? the most diversity yeah. in the country. And this morning on the show, we're looking yeah. at, y'all can't see over here, but it, we, we have that diversity yeah. represented here today. I'm still that today. kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where did the sense of humor come from? Was it kind of def a defense mechanism? Uh, it, it just was, um, you know, you take a, uh, you take a, <laughs> you take an all white family and take them to all black city, then that was what you got. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and it came out of that. It was just, it was just, it was just out of the fact that I am a, I was a really happy child. Yeah. And I stayed that way. Uh, like happy was my thing. Yeah. And I got happy from everything. I got happy from Sesame Street. I got happy from Bob Hope. I got happy from the Minnesota Vikings. I got happy you from- You just woke up I got, happy. I just, so it's, it was all about happy. Yeah. And it all is about happy. And what made me happy was I was surrounded with love, man. Yeah. And, and there wasn't just one color of people that loved me. You know, everywhere I went when I was a kid, there was always somebody saying, hey, what's that? Let me check this out. Is this your truck? Yeah. And they came, in all shapes, sizes. But you so, did yeah. something that some mm -hmm, people struggle mm -hmm. with, and, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. your happy is, is comes is not external, it's not mm -hmm, thermostatic. Mm -hmm. Happy starts right here, right? Mm -hmm, From the mm -hmm, inside mm -hmm, out. Mm -hmm. Something I had to figure out as a kid too, going mm -hmm, through some stuff. Mm -hmm, and it's because if you let somebody else determine your happiness, they mm -hmm, can snatch it away mm -hmm, at any moment, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. You have to determine that for yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, um, so your your comedy routine on the stage is, mm -hmm. is a combination of all of your life experiences. Everybody that, it, it, yeah, it I'm changed about, yeah. from one moment to the next because mm -hmm. it depends on what happened to you on the plane flight on uh -huh, the way in, right? And then just people. 
Yeah. Just all the people, all the different people that I was blessed to be able to grow up around, you know, like like Latinos, it's like they influence my whole thing, you know. Or Telemundo and and and, and <laughs> Juan Gabriel, and, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and Pablo Gigante, you know, and and and, and so I'm experience I, I, the Latin experience is in me. Yeah, you know, my neighbors from Guatemala and Mexico, and and my mother speaking Spanish, so I'm everything. Hablamente ti, cuéntame de tu vida. Sabes tú, Miguel, el neto es arrepentida. Sé que tú no puedes. Aquí intente un blanco. ¡Ame! Ok. No voy a dormir hasta tu casa. ¡This is your <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is <laughs> awesome. With that said, what uh -huh. is, you know, we, we look at comedy as mm -hmm, just mm -hmm, entertainment mm -hmm, sometimes, mm -hmm. but comedy throughout really the centuries, but mm -hmm, before we were, mm -hmm. way before we were born, mm -hmm. but comedy does so much mm -hmm. more for society. Yep, and that's why I'm glad I am one. You know, but it didn't start you there. You're like society's therapist. Yeah, you right? know, it, it didn't start like that. You know, I, I started like, my mom told me I started. My mom told me, hey, listen, you know, because I wanted to be a little criminal and doing all this stuff. And she said, hey, listen, I want you but to you know something. you would have been a smooth criminal. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it was a smooth criminal. <laughs> Michael Jackson was a smooth <laughs> criminal. Um, so she said, hey, listen, you know, if you want to start stealing, you can do that. Yeah. But you don't belong in this house because you come from people that don't own anything, mm -hmm. you know. You don't own anything, so you have to work for what you get. Yeah. So you're taking from people who, who work for something. There's three ways to make a living. You can steal it or you can work for it, or you already own something. Yeah. And you don't happen to come from people that own something. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I started working. That was the first thing I did. Early. Yeah, yeah and I became among the workers. Yeah. It was it doing work side by side by people, because that was her whole thing, was people united will never be defeated, the people, mm -hmm. right? And so I finally, at 18, got a job at a Ramada Inn as an assistant chef, because I worked at the IHOP when I was 13. Yeah. Bussing tables. And that's the thing that binds me with people is that I, I'm a worker among workers. I'm not government. I'm not military. I'm not even a star. I'm somebody who's got a great job doing comedy yeah. because that's what led to it. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? That was the building of your yeah, resume. And that's, really, what, and that's yeah. what our country is all about. So you know? we're saying that Tommy Davidson's mm -hmm. going to be on stage Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday, and mm -hmm. Sunday. When? But when? When you do. When? When? But when you do. Hold on, your, hold on now. We ain't gonna be in though. But when you do all of this, you think Tommy's gonna be in jail? it. When we you ain't gonna be in jail. And we ain't gonna be in. When you do all of your when you when you do all of your impressions though, <laughs> other people will show up on stage too, right? That you are so good at those impressions. Well, you know, one of the people I like to show up is uh, Sylvester Stallone. Um, you know, and I don't like when he shows up because you know you can be talking to him all of a sudden he get mad. Like why are you look around my house, Mick? How Mick? My house stinks. Right, stinks, Mick. I never asked you for no favors. You Is Sammy Davis gonna be there? Well, he could be, and 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 that's one of the things that I think, and I'm gonna say, I think. Um, <laughs> That is one of the most interesting things about what I do, and um, <laughs> because I, 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 yeah, man. <laughs> and and I think that me and you can do a little something because I am in Houston, H Town. Is this H Town? H Town, babe. So so I want us to do a dueling. Dueling Sammys. Yes. Okay. okay so I'll start this thing out. Okay. Mm. And um, you're scaring the children at this. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here you go. Ready? No 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 no. Nagadan dun 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 dun. Kachu 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 kachu. Kachu 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 kachu. The Candyman can. You're outdoing me, babe. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we've outdone our time right now, but Tommy, so good to have you back. Thank you for town. having me, man. And you can catch Tommy Davidson at the Houston Improv tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday evening. For tickets, visit greatdayhouston.com. If you have not been to the Comedy Club in a while, mm -hmm. it's such mm -hmm. a great time. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you.